Welcome back to Deep Thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, boy. So I was watching a Bart Sabrell post. He has a YouTube channel, which is fully demonetized. And I, I don't know if he turns off the comments or if the comments are disabled on his end. But he was being interviewed by RT, which is that Russian kind of CNN, right? It's a little misty out here, so I'm going to throw my blanket on top of my computer. Fly blind. I think only the Patreon people know what it's like, <laughs> how this show is set up. I made them a little video that's exclusively for them. So the subject of NASA is always evolving, right? NASA, SpaceX. As of April right now, in 2021, we have SpaceX, uh, Elon Musk, posting almost weekly about how his shots are all done using CG as a joke. But it's like, it's crazy. There's a lot of comments about it. He's even, uh, I don't know how this is working, whether or not he's instigating this, or the company's instigating this, but I'm now seeing posts by nerds saying, you know, they're, they're employees of SpaceX. I've seen these boosters come down with my own two eyes. Okay, well, that's not the point. The point is, no one else has, dude, dude, especially a skeptic like myself. Give me some free plane tickets, a hotel room, and uh, access to seeing these things land. I don't want to be so close you can kill me with your accident, but uh, it's, yeah, well, you know, Booster landed on top of Deep Thoughts Radio host head. But Sabrell's doing this interview, and he's mentioning uh, just a ton of stuff that we always talk about on the show. And again, a giant portion of the knowledge that I have on this came from him. And then, of course, we've added a ton of stuff over the course of six years, and we will continue to add stuff. But now there was a point where we wanted the world to change. There was uh, various movements out there that tried to make us believe that there actually was going to be a change. Hmm. Most of us don't subscribe to that anymore. It was fun. It was fun to think for three and a half years that something interesting was going to take place, that the paradigm of the world was going to change, and that good would, for the first time in any one of our lives, be victorious over evil. Not probably the case. Not probably the case in our lifetimes, even if we live a really long time. The subject of science itself is being so utterly distorted by those who have no scientific background that, again, it sets us back decades, if not centuries, from ever making real science popular to learn, popular to discover. And what a super sad thing for mankind. And what's interesting about it, and I, don't have, I have no idea what I'm going to call this, but we are going to talk about some NASA stuff, we're going to talk about space stuff in general, to sort of illustrate this point. We're going to talk about a few things, but I think you're going to dig it. We think we are here for a reason. And we romanticize concepts of what we think that thing is. You know, are we being tested? What's the point? And it would seem that because when you're young, you're idealistic, you don't understand. Like when you're young, you think everything changed so much when you were young from when you were five to when you're 15 or 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Things are drastically different every five years. And then you hit 30 and things start to slow down and, and decades start to be the interval of any change that occurs. And that's only if you pay attention to life and really drive yourself to do something new and interesting. So as you get older, you start to lose faith that things actually do change for the better. And, you know, it used to be that we thought that when you're young, I should say, not used to, when we were young, we thought that, how do I put this? We thought that things changed organically, meaning if anything went wrong in the world, it was just human beings being greedy, leading themselves on. And then, you know, we all adapted to something bad. Something became a trend that was not good for humanity. And what you'll find out is that's not the case. It's actually being controlled, especially since the 21st century. As things became more technical and as technology itself overlapped on top of us, everything became a control apparatus on top of us. 
and that's actually super duper bad. But there's a future to NASA that was in question. There's a future to Space Force, which is like, I don't even know what that is now. Oh, they're, they're talking about it online. There's SpaceX. And then there's just the world in general. And, you know, part of it's like, uh, again, we thought that the internet would wake us up, but now we know that the internet is still being used to keep everyone asleep. And the overwhelming majority of this world, even in conservative areas of the world, are completely doped out of their mind to sleep. And man, is that super sad, isn't it? You know, you wonder what your IQ is from time to time. It's a very difficult thing to assess because it's like in what area, what way, all that kind of stuff, right? And when you look at the world today, you can easily assess maybe not your particular um, IQ as it relates to the universe, but you can definitely assess your IQ as it relates to the rest of the world. How easily people are manipulated, how fearful people can be made with virtually no empirical data, just repetition and stories. Unbelievable. America's going right back into its uh, constant mass shootings. It just keeps going for the Second Amendment. And this time they're doing it so clever. I'm starting to see videos posted on really ancillary areas. So the mission is not longer just on the news. It is in a bunch of sites that show those kind of things on a routine basis, but they're, they're now starting to demonize particular types of weapons and all this other stuff. And people are noticing this in the comment section. They're saying, oh, I know where you posted that. You're from this other faction. But now raise your hand if you would ever really want to know if we ever went to the moon. Raise your hand if your belief is that we didn't go, but you'd actually like to go. And then have somebody who really knows what we can pull off, give us an assessment, a briefing on, okay, well, here's what we really know about this thing. we got those Van Allen belts out there. Project Orion has been greenlit to get through them. We've done a few test flights with no humans. We won't release the data because it's going to reveal the fact that we absolutely, positively, didn't go through those to get to the moon. And Bart's interview with RT is brilliant because he talks about this 21-year-old kid from... JPL and NASA, who completely outlines in a presentation why Project Orion exists to get human flesh through the Van Allen belt safely. Just completely ignoring the fact that we supposedly did it in 8, 10, and 11 through 17. Even though 13 didn't land, uh, their story is that it went to the moon, circled, and came back. And I forgot to tell you guys in my last uh, 520 video, my personal favorite invention of communicating with someone how ludicrous it is that we went to the moon in the first place. And it has to do with the average ceiling in the United States of America in a home is eight feet. When you convert that to metric, it's about 236 centimeters, approximately. Now, what's awesome about that is that it turns it into a base 10 calculation. So all the other missions we've ever had in the history of the space programs that we've had haven't gotten more than three and a half centimeters, three three and a half millimeters off the ground. Even in the 90s and in the 21st century, the space shuttle is still only about three and a half millimeters off the ground. Millimeters, people. And they want you to believe that in 1969 even 1968, they flew the 8, 10, and everything else all the way to the ceiling and back, safely. First time, no problem. Russians couldn't do it, and we now know for a fact that their boosters were two and a half times stronger than the -the state-of-the-art booster built in 1995 by JPL NASA. It's easy to find the truth when you want to find it. It's easy to find the truth about medicine, in the 21st century. You don't have to know the entire anatomy of the human body like a general practitioner because all you care about is that you have a sciatic nerve that's firing in your leg. You're like, what is this incredible rubber band that's burning like fire in my leg? And your doctor goes, well, that's your sciatic nerve. Like, okay, that's all I need to know. 
What can I do? Well, we don't know anything to fix that. You just have to go through. It takes about two years to get out of it. There's some stretching you can do, but if it's firing, don't do anything. There's some positions you can put your legs in. And then you go read everything online. You hear testimonies on YouTube and or in blogs, and you talk to all your friends, and you find out what the potential threshold of your recovery could be. Could be three months, could be two years, could be three years. It's easy to find this information out and then listen to your body and make it happen. You could not know how to program on Friday morning. And at least by Monday morning, if you spend your weekend, your Friday afternoon, evening, and then all your weekend studying whatever type of programming you want to learn, the amount of knowledge you will learn by Monday morning is several orders of magnitude over what you woke up with on Friday. You can do it. Now, will you be ready to hire as an engineer? Well, probably not. But boy, you'll start understanding the terms and you'll start understanding the full spectrum of what you got to learn to start being competitive. And isn't that cool? But now what we were expecting, if we were totally optimistic in the last four years of American history, at least, because we are the ones where NASA's headquarters and JPL's headquarters headquartered, we thought that maybe one of two things was going to occur. These institutions would be at the most extreme, slowly dissolved over time and handed over to legitimate third-party companies which aren't making bold claims necessarily. Oh, they might talk about wanting to do bold claims, like SpaceX talking about getting to Mars. You can say whatever you want. And I could be making a... uh, you know, computer in my house and tell you that in 10 years, I want to be the fastest computer in the world. And that can sound really exciting. And I can give you some of the methodologies that I'm thinking about using a quantum computer, you know, I'm going to make it a thing, see if I can't work that into every episode. So a complete shutdown was one of the techniques. And then you don't have to tell the truth. And for another hundred years, you just get rid of the perpetual lying machine, which makes you know, a lot of liability out there in the world. Billions of dollars that have been spent on defense projects and other secret black ops projects, as if we couldn't possibly handle that. I mean, when they rolled out the SR-71, I didn't see any protests in front of Washington, uh, in front of the Capitol building, the White House, or anything saying, how dare you spend money on a secret jet that goes, you know, Mach 3. Hmm, We're all right with that. So where is the need to hide all this money? Well, it's because every time there's a government opportunity, you got senators, you got lobbyists, you got everyone around you know, the hangers on around the outside going, oh, is that uh, Rocketdyne contract going through? Well, I'm going to buy a hell of a lot of stock the second you give me the green light that I should buy this stock because they're going to be in some 20 year project with the United States government building some super duper rocket thing. You have to understand that SpaceX was a dead cert investment. One, you know, believe it or not, as complicated as the process is, building a rocket to take off out of a camera's view and then write whatever history you want about where it went, well, that's kind of a turnkey system now. Every country on Earth that's a first world country can push together some scientists and get that done. It just needs to take off out of view. Now, whether or not they're putting satellites in space, well, it Maybe. Who knows? Again, I think that we can all agree that no matter what model of the Earth you think is out there, you can put stuff in orbit, something that floats above the Earth. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I think that one of the objectives of counter-globe theory is to get you to believe it's not one, so that you deprecate the, the apparatus that's going to be in the sky controlling you in, say, 20 years. You won't believe it's up there, but it is up there, and it's controlling you. Great. You won't know why your house is suddenly burning to the gr- ground. You won't know why you're getting a sympathetic harmony beamed down on you and you zombify in your living room. You just won't know. So keep all your options open is my main explanation for you. My main suggestion, I should say. It, it is uh, very interesting that there's so many like weird double standards out there that I'm starting to notice like I never noticed before. 
And I've even done an episode, I believe, on double standards way back in season one or two. But let me review some funny ones with you. I think it's probably probably apparent to most of you that the people that say, I believe the sciences is, is, are the least technical people you know on planet Earth. You know, one of the funny things is, is I've told you because I read Bruce Lipton's book, Wisdom of Your Cells, you know, he makes us understand that proteins are about 50% of the composition of a chromosome. Okay. Well, what we're dealing with in 2020 and 2021 is chromosome-based. It's, it's DNA-based, right? The sickness that comes in through that apparatus. And believe me, I've seen some super compelling videos that were of kidney cells dividing, and it's sort of rewriting the entire book as if these nucleic acid chains might just be a theory. Just throwing it out there, go look up kidney cells dividing. And it is like God himself is reaching down with his hands and going like this and pulling a cell apart. It is tremendous. And even cells pulling in three different directions at once. So mitosis is creating three cells instead of two. It is shocking. But let's just go with their stuff because you have to fight them with their science. It's actually a lot more fun that way. So someone says, I believe the science is, is as Salty Cracker would probably say, and just look across the table or whatever on the phone and just, okay, uh, why don't you tell me what's in a chromosome? Go ahead. Tell me what's in a chromosome. Why don't you tell me the four letters that make up a nucleic acid chain, the, the four unique letters that we use to make up a nucleic acid chain, which is ACTG, ACT-G. And just see where that goes. And they'll just implode. And, you know, I don't need to know nothing. I believe the science is... is, is. Uh, a really esoteric one is interesting is that on my personal home page on Facebook, I grew up in a world that was 50-50 white or black. And if it was disproportionately more one than the other, it was, and I'm just saying cultural content that I took into my life, not my own personal home, it'd be more black than white by a margin. The music, the, the movies, the comedy, just, just, just the sensibility to life, you know. My dad picked up a lot of culture from the same place he took me when I was a kid. And so what's interesting is you have a lot of activists in this area. And, of course, no one would be mystified if, you know, someone who is black would be following, say, black culture. Of course, that's their world. But you get a lot of, like, these folks that come out of the woodworks for <laughs> things like BLM and whatever. And they want to showboat on Facebook, how tolerant they are, how unracist they are, and all that kind of stuff. But let me give you an interesting perspective, especially if you're not white listening to this, because this should really open your eyes just a teeny tad. Now, what I'm about to tell you is not something I actually did intentionally. It's just me. But I now I'm going to continue playing the game since I've now figured it out. Without question, probably about 60 to 70, if not higher percent of the posts that I make are black culture posts, old songs from Hooker, you know, boom, 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 from the Blues Brothers. I got his, his thing up there. I've got Hobson videos up there. I have, um, just a couple days ago, I posted, um, Morris Day playing chlorine bacon skin on the, on the skins, man. It's so amazing, man. Uh, I chose 10 of my favorite album covers. And, you know, Prince is in there a lot. Um, albums that blew, my, blew me away. It's probably not quite 50-50 on that one. But here's what's funny. If I post something white up there, all the white friends I have, all these, like, artists and producers and all these Hollywood people, like, 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 comment, oh, that's a great game, da 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 whatever. Da. I post, say, an album cover of, like, Boston or... Jean Jar or Tomita, uh, you know, he's Japanese, but they come in there, boom, 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 boom. All this other stuff, anything that's black culture, next to zero likes. And the only people that have really chimed in are you folks. That's what's really funny. I know a few of you on the side. So really interesting. Well, geez, where are you when, you know, you're, you're posting the, oh my God, we lost DMX to a vaccination 
which is the truth. Or, okay, you post that. I, that's good. He deserves to be honored. But if I post a DMX video, you're not there as long as he's not dead. As long as there's not something you can virtue signal, they don't say anything. So where's all this, you know, kumbaya mindset? You should like everything. My friends are of every color on this planet. They live in tons of different countries. And if, if it's a country I don't know anybody in, and I probably don't have any friends in that, but that's about it. Now, we've talked about NASA stuff a lot, right? We've gone through all the missions that are important to us for proving one way or the other. We've taken SpaceX on separately. We've taken JPL on separately. We've separated the moon from Mars. It's good to catch up on those things. NASA seems to be laying low, but Bart Sabrell went through several missions that were supposed to occur that didn't occur in 2016, 2018. I remember Elon Musk saying he was going to put something on Mars, to put a human on Mars by 2018. We're supposed to be going back to the moon in 2024. Really? Really? But the other thing that NASA's whole thing re reveals to us is that we have been fed BS for a, an extremely long time and we swallowed it because we wanted to. Now, we were innocent in the past, I think. No one had ever lied as much as they do today, at least that had been revealed. We knew that yellow journalism was a big deal around at least by the 1930s. It was actually ancient history. That woman whose name escapes me, who exposed Standard Oil, I believe in the 1890s. You know, she was one of the OG journalists. Amazing. Now, one of my boys... Uh, and from the cigar lounge, he did refresh my memory. He said, you know, when they broke up Standard Oil, they loved it because they just created more LLCs and more C-Corps and just got bigger. You know, it was like you squished something and it turned into like eight pieces and then all eight pieces got equally gigantic. They knew the oil industry was going to be a huge cornerstone of our future. And so whatever, they didn't care. So be very careful about you know, splitting up something that you don't want to continue to exist. So there's a lot of big tech corporations that I think folks feel like you should go away. And by splitting them up, that, that's a wet dream for them. That's two different IPOs that can happen. And it also, like I've said a couple of times on the show, it standardizes them in the world as that's the company to go to to get that service. They were so huge, they got split up. They had a monopoly on this whole thing, and now we simply split them in half, create a duopoly intentionally, and you feel like you got choice. And they'll pretend to hate each other, but give me a break. The difference between us actually getting to the moon or any other place away from this planet and continuing to film it in a Hollywood basement is propulsion, right? That's the thing we have to acknowledge and change and upgrade, and it's going to have to be an anti-gravity system, and it's going to have to work with the fabric of the universe. Otherwise, it's never going to happen. I'm just telling you. You can play this video 100 years from now, and that'll still be the truth. But I think that in far less than 100 years, Earth is going to be reset on a level that only science fiction movies have ever alluded to. You ever wonder why there's all these zombie shows on TV? And you ever wonder why there's not a hell of a lot of zombie movies, unless they're comedies? I mean, World War Z is the only one that's a real serious zombie movie. And I think part of it's because they never really uh, have a story other than World War Z so far. They can portray the transformation of human beings into these zombies in a way that is sort of cinematically believable. It's too much sense of suspension of disbelief. And so we turn them into comedies and it works great. Shaun of the Dead, uh, Zombie, well, no, Zombie, uh, Zombieland, you know, just funny films, right? Because the whole thing is absurd. But what if, you know, predictive programming is a part of this game and it has to do with getting you ready for an apocalyptic world? more so like the video game Fallout than the movies like, you know, what was it, uh, Day of the Dead, 
where it's some, you know, everyone's getting infected with something and going nuts and that they can somehow live in a fully necrosis body and come alive and you can only shoot their brain. Like somehow that's the place where it all works. We know that just from shots, people die within a couple of days. But now, you know, let's use NASA as a rationale for why a reset might occur. Maybe we're getting to the actual theme of the episode here. I just, I felt this content in my head and I just got to somehow squeeze out an episode with it while I got it fresh in my brain. What if you had told so many lies that to expose the lies is to completely undermine the command structure of the world as it exists today? Well, let's talk about some of those events getting revealed. Donald Trump said, uh, you know, if he gets a second term, that we will know who conducted 9-11. Well, he ain't talking about Arabs. He's talking about the United States of America doing it to itself, as Zygmunt Brzezinski and the uh, neocons talked about, to start this world war, to go seize all the oil out of the Middle East, to secure the U.S. dollar, and do anything else they want to do, remove our rights, etc. What if the 2020 event is suddenly exposed as, wow, where did flu go? You know, from April 1st to the end of the year, we had 1,182 cases of flu. But, uh, you know, you normally had 38 million, usually kills about 365,000 people. What if that got exposed? What if the moon missions got exposed? What if there's a bunch of space stuff that we don't even know about that gets exposed? What if JFK's assassination gets exposed? What if all these conspiracies start to become revealed? What if organized violent moments get revealed? What if actors get revealed participating in all these things? Basically, what if that movement with the little letter was real? And instead of fizzling out December 8th, it continued going. The guy continued posting um, a fraudulent... uh, Selection process uh, didn't occur, or it gets exposed itself. Banking fiat currency gets exposed. What about all these things getting exposed? But you're them, and you're looking at this whole mess going, oh my God, you know, it's, it is going to pop. We can continually push it down, and we can distract them with riots and other, you know, reasons for people to hate each other. But the solution is actually really simple. Whatever new idea they've got is going to create a situation where everything that we're doing right now disappears forever. And, you know, the only thing that would make it not disappear forever would be some archaeologist somewhere in the future, hundreds if not thousands of years from now, digging up some SATA drive somewhere that got buried but not erased and somehow maintains enough data on the disk. It didn't get EMP'd, it didn't get washed out, whatever the case, and they can find a little bit of data. And let me give you a kind of a difficult question. What if somebody in a black suit showed up at your house and said, uh, which apparently one of my buddies got approached by a guy in a white suit who was a black suit guy, and they said to you, you know, here's the deal. And this hasn't happened to me, so don't read into this. They said, well, you know, you guys exposing all of this truth is only hastening, hastening, excuse me, hastening. I'm spelling things differently tonight. It's hastening the end that you don't want to have. If you just go along with the lies and you, you know, it's, it's better for society. Hey, guy, you know, I'm speaking for this person. You know, kids are getting into science because they think we can go to the moon They watch science fiction shows on TV and movies and they want to learn how to do aerospace or whatever, or whatever. All the things. And we don't want people to understand that, you know, that there's a global elite that will kill your leader if your leader happens to go against the grain. So the more you push, the more we're going to do this big thing. And say they expose some fragment of the plan and you go, well, what are you going to do? And they say, well, obviously we can't tell you because we don't want you to interfere with it. But needless to say, 99% of this planet won't exist. 99% of the life on Earth will be exterminated. 
any and all computer devices will be erased through EMP and a bunch of other techniques. Power will go away and only be available in, you know, sort of FEMA camp slash Agenda 21 cities, as Rosa Corey outlined several times. And so you'll be in the wilderness and you better have a bow and arrow like Ted Nugent. And by the way, we'll be looking for you anyway. We'll have drones looking for you that are armed. We'll have Boston Dynamics robots crawling every single nook and cranny. So we'll find you and we'll eliminate you. But if you could have just gone along with the, with the movie that you've been watching your whole life, The Matrix, we would have left you alone. Which is why The Matrix film is actually really amazing. What was the premise of this film? Neo and everybody in that film who got on the outside could have stayed on the inside, and that's where that Guido guy from, uh, was it uh, Risky Business? I forgot what his name was in the movie. He sold them all out because he wanted to eat a steak again. He's like, look, man, life on the outside is a bunch of crap. We're fighting this massive, infinite array of machines, and technically speaking, they didn't have a map of the world. They had no idea how big the opposition was, which must have been almost absolute, right? So say so you had a raging channel. You had a raging show on TV. You had a blog, whatever, however you're reaching people. And they said, look, you're going to cooperate. And by the way, you're not the only person we're, we're, we're contacting every big influencer out there. Some we're just going to eliminate. They're going to get sick. They'll be accidented. Will you play along? Will you play along just to keep the matrix going? We'll make sure your life is just as good as it ever was in the past. Just go along with some of the fiction. What do you care if we went to the moon? What do you care? I happen to believe through just, and this is just a comment from April 2021. I do believe that things are being hastened because of the invention of the internet. I do believe and even as LARPy as I think this Q thing was, I think that hastened their plans considerably. The nervousness in Zygmunt Brzezinski's speech in I think 2003 or whatever I told you about, I think he revealed that they were very, very worried about where this could go. And so they're hastening their plans. Now, were they going to do this the entire time? Well, considering the Georgia Guidestones have been there for three, three and a half decades, yeah, probably. The amount of sheer crazy that we're tolerating at this point on planet Earth is at an all-time high. Everyone's cowarding down to idiots right now. We are. We're cowarding down. The grind, the pressure, the push is finally like, you know, where day one you're like, I'm not giving you any ground and day two, you're like, okay, well, just don't give me the shot that's made out of this weird gene reprogramming stuff. Just give me the one that's a real vaccine. I'll take that one, you know? It's hard. It's hard for people that are getting cornered in their jobs. I listened to an interview that was, uh, was like one of these morning shows in Australia. And I know we have a couple great human beings. Uh, I know there's more than two, but I know two by name. Amazing freedom fighters in Australia, and I watched this show, and it was so gut-wrenching how they were calling everybody names who had any skepticism about experimental stuff being put in their body, that it had all been dismissed by the authorities, and that you literally shouldn't be able to leave your country. And this dude even suggested you won't be able to work, remote or on-site, unless you have this, trying to lock that whole country down. And these weren't politicians. These were just people talking. But, you know, better believe that they're just the tip of the iceberg of that concept and the desire to push that forward. Well, I mean, give me a break. Talk about a transformation. I mean, you could have things sprayed in the sky and you get pissed off, you know, your water's full of fluoride, but you can get that filtered. You can look outside and not go out on days that are all crazy. You can get organic food. But now they're like, no. Every single country in the world is protected by a law 
that is like America's Roe versus Wade, where you have the right to your body. Now, these people are trying to take away that right to your body. Okay, what could go wrong? We have, you know, you're supposed to not be allowed to speak your mind if you do your research on anything and find out that you have a differing opinion and a different ass- assessment of the safety of anything or the validation of history. You're not allowed to say anything. I mean, Bart Zabrell was given a video of them faking shots of the earth from space in reverse chronological order with the frames at the very end of the 54-minute reel where they reveal the whole set inside the Apollo capsule, including the red lights, the gel on the side of the screen, Michael Collins filming his face. That's conclusive. But you're not to see that. You're not to know that. You're not allowed to do that. Well, what do we know about political correctness in general? Seems like I'm changing the subject, but I'm not. Like I always say, whatever they say is, is allowable on Monday is demonized on Wednesday, and whatever is allowed on Wednesday is demonized on Friday. You're never to ever catch up with that game because the game is to control you and to rot the, the mechanics inside your brain of your cognitive abilities to see what you see, draw it into your brain, and make a connection, make a deduction, cancel certain things out and add certain things in. You're not allowed to do that. Now, what's interesting is, even though you and I will study these things at exhaustive levels, if you're like me, I mean, you know, I, you know me, I know a lot of things, and I'm trying to stitch together the most, most truthful versions of these things. I don't want to deceive myself, let alone anyone else. Being a, an educator, I took it real seriously when someone told me, look, when you misguide a child... You're committing, you're committing one of the greatest sins in the eyes of the universe, and I completely and utterly believe that. So there's no difference between an adult to an adult, which is you and I. And so you know, I'm trying to keep it real. But in my circles, people don't bring any of this stuff up unless we're just having fun at some cigar lounge. And, you know, it was, it was interesting. You know, I was uh, at a really, I went back to a barbecue restaurant that I used to go to before all this lockdown stuff occurred because my neighbor told me it was open. And I walk in the door, and it was eerie. No one was in this restaurant. I mean, nobody. Not even the people that worked there were there. The open sign is animating. The door's unlocked. The music's playing inside. TVs are blaring. And I come in. It was like surreal, man. This place is usually packed 24-7. And I, usually it's like hard to get a seat. And so I go in there, and I go all the way up to the front desk, and there's the, uh, the menu, which is familiar, but a little bit different. And the place looks a little bit different. A lot of the, the look of it was changed. And it looked nice. Totally different, and more stainless steel version of the previous one. It kind of looked like Cheers before, and then it, like a hipster Cheers, and now it looks like a stainless steel place. And, you know, I said, hello, you know, after about two or three minutes of standing there. And sure enough, the dude comes out, super nice guy, a guy named Mike. And he set me up, you know, he was giving me samples of the food. The food's great. The portions are bigger. It's different. They have a Carolina Reaper barbecue sauce, which was delicious, man. Oh, my God. So I eat my food, and then we, we start talking afterwards, and it was interesting. You know, he was, he was wearing his mask at first, and then eventually, you know, we're in a restaurant. He just finally pulls it down. We're the only two guys there the whole time. And he's a very brilliant guy nice dude. He's helping a buddy out, getting the restaurant started as he gets his MBA, master's in business administration. And uh, he at some point said, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but, and he starts kind of alluding to what we're dealing with right now. And he didn't take any major opposition stance because he didn't know where I stood, right? If he only knew, he would let it fly. But what matters to us doesn't matter to most of the world. They are so easily diverted and, and, you know, look over here, look over here. There's so much of that going on. Look at, look at what's happened. We changed presidents of the United States and all of the horror shows that constantly were there with Obama are back just like the playbook from the old came back. Suddenly citizens want to shoot each other all the time now, again. Some social media outlets, even though I don't think you're making any major change in these outlets, the posts are getting a little more wiser 
People are like, oh, I see. This is all coming back now just because this guy changed. And look how they're coming after the Second Amendment. And the funniest thing was Biden said, you know, no amendment is absolute. Ha, ha, ha. And someone made a comp, this girl made a funny video. She's a black girl and she made a video. And she had done all this compilation stuff on top of her. She played Biden saying that. And then she starts playing like, you know, scenes from like movies like Roots and starts to realize, wow, slavery was abolished via an amendment to the Constitution. Well, the 16th Amendment, let's get rid of that one. Taxes on the uh, wages, which is deemed illegal. Unless it's an apportion tax, which means even tax bracket across for everybody, which doesn't work. So part of me thinks that, that everyone's going along with everything. And the only thing that needs to occur for them, well, one, we know that the ruling classes think that there's too many people on planet Earth, which is what I covered in my depopulation episode, which seemed to go over really well. I'm glad. But did they always have to get rid of the dissidents of resistance, which is us. I was talking to a buddy of mine who's a pretty good his, history buff. And he said to me, he goes, look, you know, this has happened over and over and over and over and over again. Because I started talking about how the pyramids aren't in the hieroglyphs. And he just was like, whoa, really? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, you're right. And so we started talking about resets and how other than brand new countries like America, which are just too new to mess with, we've always had the printing press since America was created, almost every country has some relic in a past, even Stonehenge, which was moved and rebuilt. You know, it's, it's still legit, but they should just come clean that they reconstructed it in 54 and cleaned up all the stones. I mean, you go visit the thing and there's cement poured into the bottom of the stones to make sure they stand up. Well, when do you think that happened, man? It didn't just magically appear in 5,000 years ago or whatever. The people who study the mud flooding... You absolutely know that society's been reset and reset and reset. And, you know, these pyramids, we can't figure it out. They have to come after the hieroglyphs, but that makes no sense. You know, who built this stuff? And why isn't anyone researching anything? Why is it every time we find something interesting, it disappears? And why does it always end up in the Royal Academy of Sciences to be blessed or dismissed? And I don't know if I've ever said this clearly, but I hope it's understood that the Smithsonian in the United States of America is an arm of England. Here comes the helicopter. Wow, it's so misty outside, I can't even see the helicopter. Oh, there it is. So the larger question, pulling back from that other question where I said, you know, would you go along with all their lies if the other option is a threat that can be made real which is a brand new cataclysmic event in American history, or sorry, excuse me, world history that wipes most of us off the planet. But the other one is, you know, personally. You know, there's this, this visceral reaction when we find out we've been lied to. Personal life, uh, political life, world history life, you get frustrated. And it's this bizarre mechanic in the human mind that is all about knowing the truth. It is something that God built in us. It's really strange. You could be an atheist, and you still got to acknowledge you have an instinct to find the truth. Plenty of scientists out there screaming about that. I doubt a lot of people who work on the CERN Hadron Collider are big Jesus freaks. I just doubt it. And I'm willing to bet probably few of them actually believe that a God exists. I just, that's my hunch. Don't mean to insult anybody. So it's something that we want. And, you know, freedom is something I think that man wants. And if we didn't have freedom built into our system, there would be no such thing as claustrophobia. There'd be no such thing as, a, as someone using suffocation as an adjective to describe some sort of experience they were having. We don't like that. If a woman was grabbed in a parking lot by a kidnapper, there wouldn't be any resistance because it'd be like, oh, I love this, you know. I can't move anymore, and I'm not going to be able to decide what I do with my life. If this guy wants to lock me in a basement and have sex with me 10 times a day, um, I'm good with that, right? Because I don't need any freedom. No, everyone's being convinced on one half of this equation to get into 
their personal destinies because that tends to reduce the amount of people that we have as children. And then there's, I think, a split in our minds, which goes like this. We, I think, can digest a little easier past lies as opposed to lies that are being told right in front of your face. For those of you who think that SpaceX is a giant Hollywood show, those boosters landing that, again, no one's ever seen as an independent person that I would trust personally, they're always employees of SpaceX, that rubs me a different way than thinking about the fact that the moon missions did not occur. Sort of like, okay, we all have a past where we weren't our best at some point, and we got better. Uh, probably a lot of you were good your whole life, but, you know, I lived a little ragtag life myself, you know, and so I used to be a shoplifter, used to be a vandalizer when I was a kid, just all the horrible things that kids do. I've done it. All right. I'm not that way anymore. I, I didn't have guidance where I needed it. I don't think my parents even imagined me being one of those kids, and I don't to my knowledge, I don't even know if my parents know anything about what I did when I was a kid. It was just the 70s, you just, or the 80s, early 80s or whatever, and you just disappeared out of the house. And they're like, well, as long as he comes home safe, who cares? Plus the fact I never got caught probably helped. Oh, and the funny thing is the one time I did get caught was kind of indirect because my mom thought it was my friends and not me. She was just sure it wasn't me. It was really funny. We egged a laundry mat at our apartment complex, like put eggs inside the dryers. You know, fun stuff. But so we have this, you know, extra visceral effect when we see things perpetrated in front of us that are just lies. Especially when they're either designed to take our money or take our rights. Those are the two things we're getting pissed off about. Because we know where the game's going. What's amazing about the Agenda 21 stuff slash Agenda 2030 is that when you look at the conspiracy theory of the whole thing, it's completely believable, and it is matching 100% the vector of what's happening as of 2020. All your rights gone. You're going to be forcibly medicated, forcibly medicated against your will, which violates all basic human rights. You're probably going to have a bad reaction at some point with some futuristic thing, and you're not going to be able to have any recourse. Your family won't have any recourse. One, you'll be dead. That's the other thing. You'll be dead. Your kids will be dead. Your spouses will be dead. Your parents will be dead. Your friends will be dead. And, you know, you can't sue. But even if you could sue, it's not going to bring anyone back to life. You've already paid the price. And so some people are all, you know, like, I'll do anything to stop this from occurring. I consider, you know, forcible injections to be pretty much uh, the act of killing me. It may not, but it, if it does, well, I don't want to be dying a sucker, right? I'd rather just catch whatever they say is going around. I mean, just bring it to me. Bring the sickness right to me in a jar. And I'll just go, boom, just like the Simpsons episode and go, okay, now you satisfied? I'll stay in this house. You can duct tape the whole thing together. Just make sure I got some oxygen and food to, to go however many weeks, months you think I need to go. Uh, please provide the medicine that I want for my solution and then just go fuck off somewhere. And if I happen to emerge from the cave, the door rolls open, it's Easter Sunday and I walk out, you got to shut up and leave me alone. You know, Bill Gates is still out there. Bill Gates is still out there threatening the world. A software CEO is threatening the world that if everyone doesn't take this four stuff, that it's going to be 10 times as bad. So I want to get you hip to a new theory. Imagine this little gem of a result. Let's say that I, in uh, Monday, tell you that something's going around that's killing everybody. Killing millions and millions of people, even though those numbers, even the official numbers, are, according to world population, is just nothing, right? And then on Wednesday... I tell you, if you take this little shot, it's going to fix you. Now, because I know that Monday was a lie and Wednesday is all about a different agenda, you take this little shot. 
And then you fast forward a year. And I've been warning you. I've been warning you. If one person on this planet doesn't take that Wednesday treatment, that you, even with your Wednesday treatment, because you got to get another Wednesday treatment, another Wednesday treatment, another Wednesday treatment, that you're going to potentially die because your neighbor is holding out like you and I. But now here's the kicker. That little threat of 10 times as bad is actually going to be caused by the Wednesday event. But guess who it's going to be blamed on? You and I, the neighbors. But it's actually the Wednesday event that is guaranteed within 12 months, 24 months to create a huge immune deficiency problem. Your universal proteins will be destroyed by the specific proteins and you start dying. But in the press, they're going to say, you're having that experience because of everyone else who didn't take it. Even though maybe, because we have some friends of ours, like uh, parents of, of people that smoke, who don't go out, they don't see anybody, they kept themselves away from everyone, food was delivered and prepared properly, and they still died of this Monday threat, supposedly. And they were old, overweight, massively diabetic. And when I say overweight, probably almost 200 pounds overweight. But of course, they died of this Monday thing. The Wednesday thing wasn't available for them because it wasn't, quote unquote, approved yet. The cigar does not want to stay lit. It's the first one I've ever had that is burning horribly. But yeah, so what if that's the scam? They don't acknowledge because they don't acknowledge the Wednesday event is the reason why everyone starts croaking in a year or two. They don't have to. Why? Because the sciences is, is and everybody who believes the sciences is, is, and even if you were to resist, it doesn't matter. All of the control and rights that you had in your life, you kissed it away, or they kissed it away, all the Wednesday people kissed it away, such that Wednesdays are in force now. They start dropping like flies. Well, again, like we said in previous episodes this year, in just the last five episodes from this one, we said, look, if the world goes into that state, it goes into a state of chaos. And at that point, there's no more controlling anything. Your rights? Well, give me a break. Everything's in super duper quadruple emergency mode. Leaving your house is noticeable and offense. It's an offense. You can get a ticket. You can go to jail. You can be, he can have your doors welded shut. Maybe you have food. Maybe you don't. I do think it is very interesting that the United States of America is the only one that I know of, correct me if I'm wrong, that has this super duper experimental gene therapy shot. If you don't live in America and you haven't watched the show, or if you have especially, you'll know that I've been telling you forever that the perception of the ruling class is that they own America. They paid for all the boats to come over. They paid to set up the colonies. And with the Revolutionary War, we took it away. But man, do these people have long memories. They want to take it back because they feel like it's theirs. Okay. So if you really want to have a long play, and we're a country that's got a huge problem, right? It's called the Second Amendment. Well, if you can't take it out of our hands because we're too stupid to hang on to it, you could just kill us all or enough of us to put us in a state of emergency such that you can do whatever you want. How many of you remember Katrina? Hurricane Katrina, which landed on my birthday, they went around and confiscated guns from people's houses. They violated the Constitution of the United States for all the citizens that wanted to defend their property when looting started happening. And there were no lawsuits, and there's no mention of this in history. But the violation was of the absolute nature in this United States of America, because you get all those rights. Well, like I mentioned, there was an amendment to the Constitution Two free slaves. Well, imagine you create some other scenario. Let's just say Katrina, for instance. Well, there's a lot of black people live there in New Orleans. And let's just say they gathered them all up and, and put them back in shackles and, and, and shipped them off to areas to farm land and pick cotton and stuff. Well, wouldn't you expect there to be a lawsuit? Wouldn't you expect the world to remember that? 
The answer is yeah, which is why they wouldn't try that. But why is the Second Amendment suddenly okay to totally violate? After 9-11, we had free speech zones? <laughs> what? So they have beta tested everything that they are doing today and everything that they intend on doing in the near future. I wish I could say that there's enough people to fight back. The more that this new administration is doing what they're doing and this Q thing became a complete LARP and this, the general sold us completely out, okay, there you go. That was the best configuration of people in this country since probably JFK to affect any change in this country. And nothing's happening. And nothing most likely will happen except they're going to get their, their agenda through. And we'll have to live through it. I guess if we're fortunate, <laughs> you know. I have, you know, again, a group of friends that aren't even deep thought people who send me things constantly like today, I probably get from one woman who was an actress on a production I was on because I keep numbers of all the talent so that if we have something else come up and she or she matches the role, I just make a phone call and I get that resource really quickly. Uh, to my total shock and surprise, this woman is so red-pilled, and I assume her husband is as well. But she'll send me something that is very useful, but is very apparent that she needs to watch this show in certain cases. So I will send her back episodes. And, you know, there was, uh, so it, the irony was this. In one day, which I believe was yesterday, I watched this Armenian woman walk up to a podium. She's a, an attorney. And she said, look, I'm, I'm not going to allow, and she was in Orange County, but I don't think it was my Orange County. I think I read Delaware somewhere. I don't know if they have an Orange County. It doesn't make sense to have an Orange County up in Delaware, but maybe they do. I don't know. And if you know who this woman is, please drop it in the comments. But she's well aware of what's in all the uh, Wednesday treatments. And she's saying, look, you know, last time this type of treatment was tested in a clinical study on ferrets, all the ferrets died. During Trump's administration, he signed an executive order to bypass all of the clinical studies and just give it to humans. He's going to go down in history uh, if any of this backfires as Mengele. I mean, he's going to go down horribly bad in the history books. Horrib and he always said there was treatments, I understand, but you don't go out and tell people it's safe if it ain't safe. How could you know it's safe? Okay. So she says, look, the school districts in her Orange County are trying to transform the schools into these Wednesday treatment centers where every kid's going to get the Wednesday treatment. And she says, this stuff isn't safe for adults. and It's definitely not safe for kids and they don't need it because they don't have any risk factor, even with the sciences is. And then she starts to mention Mengele, who worked at Auschwitz. You know, this crazy experimentation. And she said, you know, the nightmare didn't end until 1946 when they were all put to death through the, the Nuremberg trials and then, I guess, in her marine, you know, she talked about the Armenian genocide, which is a whole other horrific thing in history. And this woman's brilliant. She's talking a million miles a minute, and you can understand every word she said. She talked faster than anyone I've seen in public talk. It's amazing. Now, what she didn't know was that the guy that built Auschwitz is the dude who helped form the World Trade Organization, which I cover in exhaustive detail in my episode called Codex Alimentarius. Go to deepthoughtsradio.com and search on C-O-D-E-X. Why do I keep mentioning this? Because no one's watching it. And, and people aren't mentioning this basic stuff. That, that dude who was a CEO of a, of a pharmaceutical company before he helped build Auschwitz, got out of that, only spent one day in jail, was bypassed by the Nuremberg trials, given a free pass, and then he formed the World Trade Organization, which toxifies all of our food. Didn't, she didn't know that, so she, she gave a false impression that there was some sort of victory in the past. No, the Nuremberg trials in 1946 was the, was the beginning of this issue that became the horrific food supply that we have today in all first world countries signed up to the WTO. But my friend, the actress, she sends me another, um, I think maybe, no, I think she sent me this woman's video. And so I sent her the Codex link and I said, look, you need to be able to recite everything in this episode at will. 
before you start passing this stuff around. Because you're only passing a tiny little murmur of a warning instead of the total bullhorn loudspeaker warning that needs to go out. So the other big question that is sort of on our lap at this point is if we believe this major reset in population is going to occur, for instance, and it's related to the Wednesday treatment, is it going to be simply the Wednesday treatment people kicking it off because they're going to get another Wednesday treatment that might spread? And then what happens to us if we don't take it? You know, let's say we still kind of go between the lines. You live in an area of the world that's pretty hip to no Wednesday treatments if you don't want them. What happens to us? Do we get rounded up when the whole world goes chaotic? Do they just simply go, look, we're not going to round everybody up. That would be a pain in the ass and cost us a lot of money and time and a lot of conflict and that. But they could. They could just easily broadcast to police officers, you got to do this or else you lose your job, you lose your pension. And all of a sudden, the rights of Americans don't matter. We've seen this a million times in America. And I don't mean to insult other countries, but America is a great place to watch when it comes to the extreme measures that are being taken to get this agenda going because all other countries have given up their guns for the most part. And, you know, when I see Australian cops, New Zealand cops, England cops, Canada cops, European EU cops raid people's homes against their rights, uh, arrest them, like our, our moderator Dave got arrested for having a speaker. When I see that, it doesn't surprise me because those countries have already sort of signaled, the citizens of those countries have signaled, at least in the majority, we're totally good with tyranny. Just bring it back already. Apparently there are some demonstrations in Ireland because they want to get out of the EU completely. At least that's what I gathered from the narration down below it. But when you watch America, you start to see, okay, well, they know that we're the biggest problem on planet Earth. We have the biggest economy in the world, which is why we give all of our money away and no one ever notices. And Americans don't get it right now in mass that, uh, you know, the funny thing is, if you have money in a savings account right now, the administration is just destroying the value of the money in America. Two trillion, two trillion, two trillion. It's just going to keep going and going. And every rationale they give us for why those trillions of dollars are being printed, you know, less than 20% of the money is actually given to the reason. I mean, the last uh, big bill we had for infrastructure that's supposed to be going through here is going to allocate out of two trillion dollars, $157 billion for infrastructure. And all the other money is going someplace else. That's teeny tiny. That's like 5%. A little over 5 Not much. So I know this episode's kind of serious, but this is the sort of stuff I think about. We are really at the calm before the storm, and it ain't the one that Q talked about. It's the one that they've been planning forever. So, you know, when people ask me about the Q thing today, and, you know, you're, by the way, the comments that you guys have given me from my episode about Juan SOB. And I have gotten two different names for that guy already, which is interesting. That's why I didn't want to mention anyone's name on point. Your comments were beautiful. I mean, you guys admitted just like me, we all got had for a little while. And then you kind of wake up out of it and go, wait a minute here, you know, that something should have occurred already and it's not occurring. So let's just get off this boat already. I think I mentioned it a long time ago, something that just doesn't ring right in my brain. I don't get it. There are more riots and destruction after a football game in Europe, which America's, Americans call soccer, than there are when rights get taken away. And these are big thuggy, big guys, man. I mean, formidable human beings that I would not want to meet on a day where they're not happy to see me, right? But where are those same people? when their rights are being taken away. Because here's the thing. I think one thing that we don't say enough that needs to be repeated to everyone on the planet that can understand the words coming out of your mouth, basically, is once a right is taken away, in terms of the people that took it away from you, you're never getting it back. You are never, ever getting it back. You know, this whole new norm thing. There you go. Everything that sucks about 2020 is going to become standard practice. What, are you kidding me? 
We had a thing here in Huntington Beach, and it's so weird how they're attacking Huntington Beach, the place I live. They brought the BLM scumbags into our town about a year ago. Again, there's no demands. You know, the, the founder just bought a $1.4 million home on the outskirts of Beverly Hills just recently. Oh, yeah, because that's, that's what you deserve. <laughs> they have no demands, right? It's just we're going to break shit. So we had to board up our entire beautiful beach community because they were coming. And I mean, they had military forces there. So just this uh, Sunday, they, I don't know where these people came from, but they had White Lives Matter show up and who knows where these groups come from, right? I'm assuming it's the same exact group putting this together. And I only saw one truck drive by the taco place that I go to with an American flag on the back. But I guess everybody who was in that vicinity got an EBS message, an emergency broadcast message friend of mine was in that vicinity. She got it. She asked me if I got it. I was like, no, I was at home. And they were saying, if you even come down here, you're just going to get arrested. And apparently she walked out and tried to ask one of the uh, cops what was going on, and he wouldn't even talk to her. What the fuck is up with that? Just say, dude. Just get back in there. Just got some rioters out here. We don't want you to get caught up in this. Nope, nothing. And I, all I saw was a video of some overhead helicopter shot or something like that and there was a little scuffle between a couple guys thank god but guess what the weird thing was we didn't board up the town when we heard these people were coming no one would unless another faction's coming so antifa was there blm was there you know and it's last time i went to the i went and photographed and videotaped the blm thing out of a hundred percent of the people that showed up for that i'm telling you i could have counted the black guys on these two hands there was no more than 10 black guys down there. The rest were all these crazy Berkeley people or wherever the fuck these people come from walking around. And, you know, it remains civil, but, man, it almost, it almost went to blows a couple times. And if you don't know our town, let me just get you hip to it. We are, a, obviously, you could say we're predominantly white. However, if you count... Mexicans and blacks and Asians of all different origins, Indians, Arabs. We are a pretty damn good melting pot and we love the shit out of each other. We really do. We go to each other's business. I get cigars from an Arab guy. We got another Arab guy who runs a hookah place two doors down from the cigar joint. Uh, Main Street's got tons of black guys that work down there. And the funny thing about the BLM riots when they were there, I don't want to necessarily call it riots, demonstration is that our locals, our local black dudes, were like standing out front going, looking at these other dudes going, what is your deal, man? You need to go to a different town. I work here. I got seniority. In fact, some of these dudes are managers and owners of these places, and they're like, you're just making everybody look bad. Just, just move on already. Or give us your demands and go away. We'll see what we can do. But if you don't have demands, you know, no justice, no peace means nothing. What do you want? Don't talk to us. We're not the cops. You need to talk to the chief of police of every single precinct in all 52, or sorry, 50 states. My gosh, I'm adding in numbers, all kinds of stuff today. But yeah, there is a problem. You know, all the cops have different methods of using force in every single town across the United States. Well, that's screwed up. Again, like I said, you get arrested in Anchorage, Alaska for a particular crime. And the same exact crime happens in Miami, Florida or the Keys of Florida, you should have the same thing happen to you. Not two different things. But that's, that is the way it works. Well, it's, it's almost like I want to create a different group that goes, okay, well, let's just go talk to a president or whatever. But guess what? They're not answering the phone, you know, for any of these activists. So, again, there's a lie in there somewhere, right? Anyway, give me your thoughts. Are we on the precipice of a Massive cataclysm. Uh, do you still believe? There's only one guy, I think, wrote a comment. And I think he just deleted it because I tried to read it and it said, comment no longer available. But it was something like, you know, ye of little faith and all this other stuff with the LARP. And I'm like, dude, you have no idea how many thousands of hours I ingested of that LARP. I, I don't even know if there's a post I haven't read four times because every single day that a post was made or a series of posts was made. I had to watch every single video, which is probably about 10, twice. So I know all about 
what was suggested, what was asserted, what is supposedly going on in the world. I think a lot of it's true. I think some of it's really hard to believe, but it could be true. Don't know. But I think that they got wiped out. Too many people are compromised. Let me know your thoughts. And go to deepthoughtsradio.com if you want to bookmark this whole thing I've got going on here. We got audio, video, social media, all new remastered season one, a store, and two ways to donate to the site, to the page, to the movement. For those of you who do, I love you very much. Thank you so much. But if you came by first time, welcome. Uh, hit the subscribe and like button if you dig it. A bunch of new content's coming. And we will be kind of getting off of some of this sort of doom and gloom subject matter. But it is important, unfortunately. So I'm going to try to litter kind of fun episodes in between. So we're going to cover in the next uh, coming weeks here, we're going to cover probably in a single episode, I'm going to cover giant humans and dwarfs that definitely existed on this planet. And then we're going to continue monitoring Egyptian Egyptology discoveries by some of the guys that are just pioneering and re-pioneering the history over there. And, you know, if NASA does anything interesting or NASA does something interesting, we'll definitely touch base on that as well. But also, please give me your suggestions. Anyway, take care of yourself and someone else, and I'll see you in the next Deep Thoughts. Over now.